thank you to Gen Con and to all of you for having me here today to talk about a topic that is very near and dear to my own heart. Stories matter, and who we include in those stories and how we portray them matters. After all, we're basically just made up of stories, the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves, the stories that we have learned, and the stories that we have been told. And that has a significant effect on the hobby that we call storytelling gaming. I know because one of my very early experiences with a storytelling game was called Smear the Queer. I was related to other stories like, what, are you a fag? And stories like, ah, that's so gay. I knew what the words queer and gay and fag were long before I knew what they meant. And I knew what those words and their power was long before I knew that when people said them, they were talking about me. Now, if you're not queer, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, any part of the whole non-heteronormative, non-cisgendered spectrum, it's difficult to explain the impact that those stories have. The sense that they give you of a wrongness about you, of a need to hide the truth about who you are, about a need that either says that you have to fight or that you have to shrink inside of yourself and become small and inobtrusive and unnoticed. A sense that you have to be very careful about what you say and what you do and to who you say things. It's a very lonely, lonely feeling. Now, when I was a teenager, I was so deep in the closet that I could see the lamppost to Narnia. I was desperately afraid of anyone finding out the truth that I had realized about myself. And so I kept that truth very, very close. And I was very careful to make sure that I let no clue leak out that anybody might suspect. People did suspect anyway, by the way, but that's neither here nor there. And I felt like I was the only queer person in my universe. I knew others existed somewhere out there in the world, but in my world, it was just me. And so I thought about killing myself a lot. Games helped. In my teenage years, tabletop gaming was my outlet. I saw that lamppost to Narnia, and I kept on going right into fantasy land. In tabletop games, I could be a hero. I could be a champion. I could be an explorer. I could be anything I wanted. But even then, I couldn't be entirely myself. Even in the games and the fabulous imaginative worlds that I loved, I didn't see anybody who was like me. And that made my imaginative world incomplete. Now, in some regards, it's easier, uh, I hope, today for uh, people to come out, and it has been, certainly, than it was when I was a teenager in the 80s. But it's never easy. Coming out is one of the most difficult things anyone will ever have to do. 
because it's the very definition of vulnerability. You're revealing something very deep and very personal about yourself. And you have no control over the situation or how it's all gonna go. People surprise you. Sometimes they can be incredibly kind and sympathetic, and other times they can be terribly cruel and dismissive. Often because of the stories that they've heard and the stories they've accepted as true. I heard from a friend of mine from my high school gaming group. Uh, he had moved away um, partway through high school and um, through the magic of social media, I heard from him many, many, many years later. And after we you know, got initially caught up on, hey, how are you doing? Wow, we haven't heard from you in so long. Uh, he said, so, I hear you're out. And all my old defensive reflexes went up. I'd been out for years at this point, but still, that question made me tense. And I said, yeah, yeah. And he said, oh, me too. We had sat across from a gaming table, across from each other, every week, sometimes a couple times a week, playing games for hours. We were friends for years. Neither of us knew. Because we were both too afraid to say anything. Because we were both absolutely sure that we were the only one. Because we didn't see any path in those worlds that we were adventuring in, in those imaginative realities that said that we could express those things. So when I got into the game industry professionally, I began to include some queer characters and elements in my own work, I, largely because I think all writers include something of themselves. Uh, in their work. And I received a mixed range of reactions. Um, some uh, people told me that I had a clear political agenda. Um, I got accused of inserting myself uh, into my own stories as some kind of wish fulfillment. Um, and I uh, got told that I was writing Mary Sue characters uh, who are just thinly veiled versions of me uh, as some sort of hero, uh, as though we're not entitled uh, to the notion of seeing ourselves as heroes. But I also got such wonderful and kind reactions from fans who came to me at conventions like Gen Con and wrote to me to say, thank you for including a queer character or a queer element in your work. For many of them, it was the very first time they had ever seen anything like that in a role-playing game. And so colleagues of mine and I uh, began talking about the relative lack of uh, queer inclusion and diversity in our hobby. And so we started the uh, Queer as a Three-Sided Die seminar here at Gen Con uh, seven years ago, uh, which is going on, in fact, right at this very moment in another seminar room. And the QD3 panel was a real eye-opener, uh, not so much for the audience as for us, the panelists, because it very quickly became apparent how much we had to learn about diversity and inclusion in our work. We heard from a lot of people in our community, and a lot of them basically had the same question. Where are the people like me? Where can I see myself in these worlds that we're creating together? And we realized that we had a lot to learn in terms of how we were doing our own inclusion work. When I was developing uh, the first edition of Blue Rose 
for uh, Green Ronin fans, uh, Green Ronin Publishing. I uh, did a lot of uh, work to make the setting more inclusive of queer characters and queer themes. Uh, and uh, editor Jeremy Crawford, who worked with me on it, also um, worked to make the, the setting more inclusive. Uh, however, uh, part of the arcana system of the game could definitely be read as implying that trans people were somehow unnatural. Now, Crystal Frazier, a uh, trans colleague of mine, uh, called me out on it and said, can you see how this could be read really badly? And I was mortified. I, I still am in many ways. Um, that was certainly not my intention. But here's the thing. Intentions don't matter. Actions and outcomes matter. And we have to be responsible for the outcomes of our actions, regardless of what our intention was. I learned that my own exclusion as a queer man didn't necessarily give me insight into the exclusion experienced by women, by people of color, by trans people, by bisexual people, by asexual people, by aromantic people, by disabled people, on and on and on. I learned the importance of listening to other people's stories and creating space for them to share their stories rather than necessarily presuming that I was the one to tell them. Because stories matter. Who we include in them and how we tell them matters. Ideas have weight. And those ideas can be used as the foundation to build something on, or they can be used as the weight that is stacked upon someone that they're forced to carry. And as storytellers, we get to decide how we're going to do that. And we get to question and consider the stories and ideas that we have heard and we have been told and that we have incorporated into our own story. Things like, what is the justification for this character to be queer? I don't know, I've been waiting for the plot justification for why I'm queer for quite some time now. Uh, and it hasn't been forthcoming. The author never returns my notes. The notion that marginalized people need to justify their presence in your story is the whole reason why people are marginalized in the first place. The need to exist without justification is the story of queer liberation since the very beginning. Queer people exist. Therefore, if your story is about people, some of them may be queer. Now, you can talk about your reasons as a designer to be inclusive, but an individual character doesn't need to have some sort of plot justification to be who they are. Or ideas like, Queer stories are all about struggle. Sometimes this is a well-intentioned effort to focus a spotlight on the struggles that queer people face. But it can also make everything about our struggle. It's a story that says your life is going to be nothing but struggle. You can expect no joy. You can expect no happy ending. Uh, the most extreme version is in the ever-popular kill your gays trope that says if you see a queer person in a story, especially if you see more than one, odds are very good that one or all of them will be dead by the time the story is over. Or at the very least, they're certainly not going to end up happy. 
Or ideas like everything about queer stories is about sex. Which, again, can be a sort of well-intentioned effort that's usually framed like, well, I feel like that's your private business. And that shouldn't necessarily enter into this space. Because I don't feel like anything sexual should be included in this story. It's a way of reducing queer people entirely to our parts and what we might or might not be doing with them. Yet, heterosexuality and heteronormativity is everywhere in the stories that we're hearing and being told. Those people who don't want to have anything sexual in their stories don't have any problem including opposite sex married couples, families with children, romances, parents, families, any of the numerous things that point towards heterosexuality without necessarily explicitly demonstrating its presence. And all the same sort of things that queer people experience. Which of course leads to queer stories and content aren't for children. In spite of the fact that quite a few children are themselves queer. And let me tell you, if they don't hear stories that show them as heroes, as protagonists, as people who can overcome problems, as people who can deal with the world around them, then the only stories they're going to hear are the slurs and the ugly rumors and the stories that drive us to hide. Moreover, those are the only stories that straight kids are going to hear. So the theme for this year's Gen Con Insights is diversity by design. So here's the key upshot of it all. You have to do it. Diversity is a choice. It's a choice that we have to make as creators, as designers, as publishers, as industry professionals, but also as players, as game masters, as hobbyists, as consumers, as people who belong to this community and to this industry. Diversity doesn't just happen. It's something that we make happen. It's something that happens by design. I know a lot of very well-intentioned people who say, well, I want to be more inclusive. I want to make my work or my products or my community more diverse, but I don't know how, and I'm afraid that I'm gonna do it wrong. That's a real possibility. While I was disappointed that some of my own efforts to be inclusive were not as successful as they could have been, I realized and I learned from those things. I hired my colleague, Crystal, to rewrite that material in the new edition of Blue Rose to ensure that trans stories receive the treatment that they deserved. Listen to the stories of other people that you want to include. Hire sensitivity readers and diversity consultants and pay them what they're worth. Seek out the people who you want to include. Listen to their stories. Hire them. Pay them what they're worth. If you make your community and your creative team and your peers more diverse, your work will reflect that. Your games will reflect that. Maya Angelou said, 
I did then what I knew how to do. Now that I know better, I do better. Do now what you know how to do. And keep on learning and listening so that we can all do better. Because stories matter. Representation matters. Diversity and inclusion matter. The right story might change or even save someone's life. And that is well worth the effort of doing the work. Thank you very much.